Today, I'm off to face my nemesis. What makes a good woodland photo? Is it the colours, the composition, the diagonals or the rule of thirds? Do you photograph one tree, a group of trees, a branch or intermingling branches? With so many things to think about, the woods can be a very overwhelming place to photograph. <laughs> Welcome to another video. So today I'm in the woods, as you can see, and I'm here taking my own advice today. Um, I've got about an hour, and it's my sister's 50th uh, surprise birthday party, so I don't have a lot of time. So I've come to the woods just to get a couple of images, maybe two or three images. Um, I'm based off my own advice, and the reason that is is because today I was talking to my son about uh, rugby. He plays rugby. Um, he's 15 or 14. He's, coming up, he's in the under 15s. And um, he's telling me about how he's afraid of getting it wrong when it comes to certain uh, things in rugby. And he doesn't want to try. So he'll back away from the ball it, it, without trying because he doesn't want to get that wrong. And I've been trying to explain to him that you've got to do something wrong in order to learn from it and get better you can't just look at something i said to him if i sat and watch rugby all day does that make me a pro rugby player because i know everything there is to know about rugby no i have to experience it i have to go through the process i have to do it and then i have to fail and then i have to do it again um, and it, it got me thinking um woodland photography for me is one that i've always not avoided shooting in the woods because i'll do mushroom photos in the woods light painting in the woods um, so you know the wood wood photos I've, I've come to the woods and taken photos before but I've never really focused on trees now the reason for that is and I'm sure a lot of people will agree that woodland photography is quite hard and trying to find a composition within all the trees and clearing all that mess because it's quite a messy scene um, can be quite tricky so I've always avoided that um, not in the hope that I'd get better at it and just be really good at it one day, but um, I've just not I've just not done it. So that's why I'm out today. I'm out today just to try and get a couple of images that I'm happy with. Um, I don't expect them to be the greatest images, but and I've not come to the probably not the best woods composition. It's quite a dense, packed wood, so they're probably not going to be the greatest images. But um, I didn't have the time to go further afield. And there is a couple of woods I want to try um, that I know there's a couple of hour drive probably about an hour and a half drive from where I am so um, I will try them but for today it's this is probably a 10 minute drive from where I live so it's convenience for me but yeah so I'm going to try and get a couple of good images or fairly good images of a tree a bunch of trees whatever um, whatever I come across so that's that's the plan today I don't know about you, but um, we've had in the UK, and I know I've got some viewers that are from uh, America, so I don't know what whether this would apply to everybody, um, but we've had an early autumn in the UK because we had such a dry spell through the summer and all the trees have dropped their leaves early. So we've got a lot of, as you can see on the ground, we've got a lot of color in the ground. It looks really, really nice, but the trees themselves they're not the greatest. Um, they're not the greatest for autumn pictures. There are some areas that have got some, but they're just inaccessible. Um, 
I might fly the drone up and, and take some aerial shots of them one day. Uh, but the, uh, where I am, and especially around my area where I live, it's it's not the um, it's not the greatest for autumnal shots. So I'm going to do my best with what we got and try and get something. But yeah, let me know in the comments whether it's the same wherever you're viewing this from. Um, do you have the same problem with autumn photography or autumn shots or autumn just nice autumn colours? Are they all off the trees where you are? Let me know. Come across this tree, which I quite like because it's well, I could say it's covered in moss, but if you come around this side, it's not. There's a bit less moss up the top. Um, so I'll probably come around this side and take the photo. Um, but also just up here, I'll just take you, where do I see it? Oh, it's here over here. So just over here is this gnarly looking tree again. It's covered in moss. So that's quite a nice tree. And just thinking of the angle I've taken it from. See here on its own this looks awesome I like I like the shape of this tree if I could isolate this tree I think that would be a really good picture um, unfortunately there's quite a lot going on in the background I don't know whether I can whether I can isolate that or not with a shallow depth of field I'm not entirely sure um, but obviously I'm in the depths of the woods so it's not the greatest area to be but I do like that image and I think I might take that one and then I might take that one down just a little bit further the one I, the first one I showed you so today I am using the 24 to 105 now this is image stabilized and it's a full frame as an EF mount lens it's not uh, the L lenses that uh, the Canon make but it's I picked it up quite cheap actually um, because I wanted to try it out because I've not got I've got a 50 I've got a hundred I've got a 70 to 200 and I've got the uh, 17 to oh god what is it it's the wide angle lens I've got I think it's 17 to 45 maybe but I haven't got anything that kind of does a whole range so this is 24 which is wide and then it goes all the way up to a zoom or telephoto, which is a 105. Obviously, it's not not the best of both ends, but it's a kind of a middle ground lens. And I'll talk more about this in another video uh, coming up probably next week, um, where I will review it and see how much of an all-rounder lens it is and how good it is. So with that being said, I'm going to go and set up my shot. crop it so I'm not entirely sure what I'm going for at the moment so the highlights are a little bit uh, blown out so I've got to just adjust for that in a second but the composition is basically I'm going to come from the bottom right of the frame and I'm going to come up and I like the way that this main branch um, here this big one here comes up and out of the frame and then these come off um, either side of it so that's my composition hopefully uh, this lens is only I think it's free 3.5 uh, that it goes down to f-stop wise so hopefully that's enough to give me a shallow enough depth of field to isolate that tree but I'm not overly bothered if it doesn't so an f3.5 tenth of a second and we're exposure bracketing for one stop over one stop under see how that looks
get the the mossy tree, the first one I showed you, uh, into a good composition. And I'm finding it a little bit difficult to separate it from. There's quite a few trees in the area um, that kind of overlap, and it, uh, there's not any clear separation there. And the only thing I've come up with so far is, let me look at this image, is this, this tree here and this tree here kind of sort of wraps itself around this tree here. So that's the uh, image I'm trying to compose, just to try and eliminate the, the, the separation issue that I've got because every other angle that I take, I've got a lot going on in the background. So that's the image I'm trying to take at the moment. Okay, setting wise, I've got five seconds or fifth of a second, sorry. So setting wise, I've got fifth of a second uh, and I'm on F5.0 and I'm slightly underexposed. But I'm not overly concerned about that. I wasn't overly happy with this composition. I like the tree and the layout of it. But I just couldn't get a clean image but I was feeling father time breathing down my neck willing me to hurry up to get ready for this party in the end I took these two photos one of which is focused in the foreground and one on the, the background I'm not too sure which one I prefer to be honest let me know in the comments what you feel okay so that's the video done for this week uh, I think I got a couple of nice shots they could be better but I'm definitely going to go to another wood and I actually quite enjoyed walking, the, the weather I think helps with a bit of the atmosphere in the, uh, in the sky uh, in the, with the rain and whatnot. I think that helps with the, um, just pulling out the images a little bit easier. So um, I'm definitely gonna uh, go and do some more of those, of those. So keep an eye out for those. Um, also, I'm gonna be reviewing the focus rail that I purchased recently, um, I'm, but I'm waiting on, uh, I'm making a, not a studio, but I'm making it in a garage, I'm making a, uh, area I can film and I can do some macro shots and um, get some look good uh, sort of top down shots of products that I'm reviewing and stuff uh, so that's come in but I've filmed the first half of the focus rail which is out in the woods again believe it or not um, where I, I test that out see how I get on with it and I compare that to um, manual focus so uh, keep an eye out for that video that's coming in the next week or two um, and also I'm going to be reviewing the 24 to 105. So that's the lens that I was using today. Um, I picked that one up quite cheap and I've just tried it. This is the first time I've tried it today, but I'm going to give it a good take it out. I'm going to take it out and give it a good test on various different locations and see how it adapts to different scenarios. So keep an eye out for that one. Um, if you like this video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed, please do consider subscribing because it does help with the page and I appreciate it massively. So until the next one, I will catch, no, I've done it. Do you know I've done that before? I think previous video, I can't remember which one. I will catch you on the next one.